Hey guys, uh, very good evening. This is Rahul. Uh, I hope everyone is all right. So let us start today's webinar. Uh, so my name is Rahul Kumar. Uh, I am the uh, one of the senior instructors of Edureka and uh, provide Hadoop administration trainings as well as I'm having an industry experience of around 13 years now. So uh, working with uh, uh, IT companies for uh, setting up the Hadoop clusters and administrating the Hadoop clusters. So, based out of India right now and uh, working in uh, big data technologies, uh, I have uh, uh, um, experience of I have experience of uh, in Linux as well as Java as also, uh, and provide, providing the support as well as uh, all the uh, supervised supervision guidance to all the uh, clients who who wants to move big data these days. So today's uh, webinar is uh, more about uh, the uh, a day in the life of a Hadoop administration. Okay, uh, what are the different activities we do in the Hadoop administration uh, from a day-to-day -day activities? I mean, we we talk about we'll talk about that, and a couple of things we'll do from the practical aspect as well. We'll do some implementation also. Uh, before we start this uh, webinar, guys, uh, uh, you feel free to ask any questions in and put it in chat window. You are all going to be muted right now. Okay, you won't be remain unmuted because uh, there are a lot of participants call. Okay, so if you have any uh, specific query, okay, which probably I'm not able to answer, uh, let it be related to sales or like that. Okay, uh, you can please drop an uh, email to. Uh, our sales team, uh, they will certainly guide you in a best possible way how you can set up your clusters or let's say what about the Edureka, how they take on these activities, okay? So anything guys, anything related to any issues which you share will resolve, please drop an email to our sales team and they will certainly assist you in the best possible way. Okay, so let's get and understand uh, what at the end of this webinar you will come to know. So you'll come to know about the daily tasks a Hadoop administrator uh, do. Understanding the Hadoop uh, two cluster setup. So basically, some of the things which are uh, which are like in a theoretical way uh, how you can set up a Hadoop two cluster, and then how all tolerance is maintained in the cluster, like high availability stuff. Okay, so we are being, we are going to focus more about the high availability itself. How you can set up TFS high availability and uh, YARN high availability. So we're going to talk about that today. Uh, any issues in the audio, Kumar? Uh, are you not able to hear me? Any issues? Or uh, is it okay now? So if you have any issues, guys, uh, regarding the audio or video, please drop your uh, comments into the chat window. Okay. Uh, we do these things very seriously, so you can just let me know, and uh, I will do some settings from my side if anything is required, and probably it will come better to you. So let me know if you have any audio or video issues at any point of time, and and at any point of time, if you have any queries as well, guys, please do put these into this questions window. Okay, so I would like to resolve all the queries regarding the course, regarding the webinar, regarding the uh, any of the topics you want to talk about. Okay, so before starting it, so I have got one query that uh, how can I benefit through the Hadoop administration as like I have got a five years experience in uh, Linux administration. So Hadoop administration is one of the uh, you know top agenda or let's say top uh, skill for the Linux administrator because uh, when you are when you already into the Linux administration, you understand what are the what are the different components of Linux. Hadoop clusters run on the Linux. So it's more about learning the technology and then uh, getting the underlying aspects of Linux as well. So you integrate those both of those stuff and get to know what is uh, Hadoop all about. So Hadoop administration is a really good skill for Hadoop, uh, for Linux administrators. Uh, it's one of the top skills for uh, I mean it's going to be certainly top skills for coming few years as well. And uh, most of the Linux administrators today I have seen. Uh, learning Hadoop administrator. Even I'm I'm a Linux administrator, so uh, I know like how when I when I've learned this uh, niche skill, how I got benefited. Uh, not only from the job aspects perspective, but yes, uh, when you are actually learning the distributed systems, okay, 
how they get benefited and uh, how you can integrate them into the Linux. Uh, all those skills uh, certainly you acquire by, by learning Hadoop. Uh, for prerequisites for learning big data administration, certainly I would recommend to have a basic knowledge of Linux. Okay, knowledge of Java or any other or any other language is required to uh, learn Hadoop administration. At least, I'm not talking about the uh, I'm not talking about the development aspect, guys. But yes, from the administration aspect, this is one of the prerequisites. I will say, uh, which everyone will recommend that you should have some knowledge of Linux at least. Okay. So you should know how to read the files, how to list the files, uh, delete the files, uh, edit the files, you know, what is the directory structure, at least those kind of stuff you should have. And next level of skill we generally, you know, write in our classes itself, not from the Linux basics, but yes, from the Hadoop perspective, how you can actually uh, monitor your cluster, let's say how you can uh, create your cluster, build your cluster, implement your cluster, implement this high availability. Uh, I mean, I generally go via the practical stuff, not from the theory, so it, it might be a bit complicated as well sometimes in the class. Um, so when we talk about the Hadoop, guys, okay, so majorly we talk about the, uh, you know, we talk about the Hadoop, we talk about not Hadoop itself, we talk about the ecosystem part as well. So for example, Hive, HBase, Big, uh, Impala, Hue, uh, Sentry, uh, uh, Uzi, all these are part of Hadoop ecosystem component. So our course is not that rigorous or not that uh, you know huge where we are covering all of these ecosystem components. But yes, we do cover all uh, some of them in basics. So we do touch base based with Scoop, Flume, Hive, HBase, uh, Uzi, all these kind of ecosystem components. Okay, so you can uh, probably go through our course details and you will find out that uh, we do cover the Hadoop ecosystem components as well in our course. Okay. Uh, big data field certainly is very big, okay, and it's a challenge to really learn this uh, uh, system. It's a big thing to learn, uh, understand all these ecosystem components, how they are uh, competing with each other, and Hadoop administration learning alone, alone that it's not sufficient. Certainly, I mean you you should have the understanding of other Hadoop ecosystem components as well. So we talk about the. Hadoop administrates it's not about statistical analysis or predictive analytics or any decision trees, R, gaming, data science, no. We talk about the, like there are three levels, okay, so let's say, let's take it like data scientist, uh, then the development architect kind of level, and then third is the administration level. So where we basically you, at the ground level, at the base level, how you implement all of these things, okay. So we are at the third level, okay, we are at the administration level. So requirements come to me. I implement all those clusters. Uh, the hundred node, let it be two hundred node or thousand node, whatever it is. Uh, maximum I have managed like eight hundred node. So uh, you manage that kind of cluster end to end. Okay, let it be monitoring or implementation, management, uh, and distribution, communication, support, whatever it is uh, related to the cluster. You do end to end management of that. Okay. So whenever course starts, I mean. This is like just a webinar for a one hour just to give you the high level idea of what this is all about. But when we go into the course, okay, we start with the uh, distributed file system, the one of the component of uh, Hadoop, and then the MapReduce and the YARN part. Okay, so talking about the latest technologies and how you can implement them in your cluster itself is one of the top agenda of our course itself. So as I just said earlier that I do mostly cover the you know uh, practical aspects of all of these things uh, instead of going into the uh, theoretical part. So it becomes sometimes you know uh, rigorous for the students itself that okay how we are going to tackle all these things. Okay, so what we always recommend is complete your assignments, complete you know tasks uh, on a weekly basis. When you're, if you're joining the uh, week weekend courses or if you're joining the daily courses, then complete try to complete your task uh, as much as possible and. Uh, 70 to 80 percent of the stuff will certainly be retained okay after the end of this course and then 20 to 30 percent I would always say it, I would recommend some books I recommend some tutorials so you can go through them uh, explore yourself okay uh, nobody is uh, good enough to you know give everything to you in your mind so you need to explore yourself as well and then you can take it to the next group. okay so when we talk about the Hadoop administration we talk about like uh, the general not just the general daily task. We talk about the, uh, you know, setting up the whole cluster itself, implementing it, uh, monitoring it, diagnosing the issues in with the Hadoop uh, uh, developers, working with the 
uh, various teams to integrate their components uh, on a daily basis, providing the security to the developers or let's say the teams. Okay, when when you are when you are actually uh, 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 given the task of administration itself. Okay, so it can be a multiple people in the team. It can be you know alone as well. I mean, it depends of depending upon the org to org. Okay, so in this series of our webinar, I mean, there was, say we are going to talk about most of the focus on the high availability stuff. Okay, so when we say high availability, like uh, how you can set up the Hadoop distributed file system. Okay, uh, when we when we talk about the map reduce part. Okay, so basically the resource manager high availability. So how you can set. Okay, uh, and then like giving you some basics about uh, you know upgrades as well. You can do the upgrade from version one to version two, version two if you're moving from there. And also we're going to talk about the uh, some cluster monitoring part. So basically the ganglia stuff. Okay, so you come to office. Uh, first day, and let's say uh, you, you are being asked to uh, start a new technology in your uh, org, and you are being asked that okay, uh, you, this is what we want to do. Uh, what do you think, and how going to proceed with this? Okay, uh, so how you will react to it? So you you start planning that days. Okay, so start planning. I mean, I remember my first day when when I started this whole Hadoop part. Okay, I. Was given this task to implement the cluster, so we start with an Excel sheet, just listing down all these steps first. Okay, so what all steps we need to uh, take to build the cluster. Okay, and then slowly we we got all the hardware requirements, software requirements, uh, developer requirements. This is what we need to have, and then you, uh, the role assignments. That okay, first node should have this much of roles, second node should have this much of roles. You know, slowly and slowly, gradually we reach to at we reach at some level that okay. This is how our cluster look sh uh, should look like, and then uh, we build the cluster. Okay, so building the cluster certainly, I mean, when you are building it first time, you require a lot of thought process. Okay, because at the end of the day, uh, this is what the the whole. I mean, it's not just a bunch of nodes. Okay, it's a, a whole big data thing where you have put data in terabytes and petabytes, and certainly it's a future. So people are uh, expecting this to be. Uh, the future technology for your org. So you need to have some understanding of what you are trying to build, how you are trying to build, and what aspects you can actually, uh, with what what specific measure you should take to uh, build that cluster. Anil says attending from mobile can uh, now I uh, now can see only blank bright screen. Uh, Anil, I don't see, I don't really uh, see a reason why you are not able to screen because uh, all of our uh, members are able to see the screen, so I would recommend here just to rejoin once, and probably it will be sorted out. Okay, so that would uh, I would say. Okay. So when I say guys, uh, how, how big it, this technology is, you know, you can see like a simple, typical slave node hardware configuration. So basically, there are two aspects of this Hadoop cluster. One is the master node, another is the slave node. Okay, so master is the master of the system, certainly the administration node. Which basically says, uh, you know, uh, I control all the nodes in the cluster, and slave nodes is something which is going to uh, you're going to put all the data, and you can see a simple, I mean, this is a just a, a sample configuration. I would say uh, we have uh, put here uh, midline configurations all around deep storage, one gigabit Ethernet, and you can see the disks around here. The major major part is the disk part, uh, 12 into 3 terabyte uh, SATA 2. 7200 RPMs disk drives, okay, which is why I'm putting this much here because I mean 36 terabytes on one node and consider it like consider that let's say you have 100 such data nodes, okay, so you certainly have got some good huge amount of space over there, okay, so doing a cluster planning how you're going to manage this much this many number of nodes as well as how you're going to uh, build this size of cluster, okay, so when you are actually working in the Hadoop administration stuff, okay, the major, uh, you know, the important, say, the critical aspect of any cluster of Hadoop is uh, management itself or uh, implementation in the first stage. So, uh, how you're going to do that? That's that's very critical. So, very good question from do uh, do BI developers working on high big uh, peak need to know how to set up the cluster? No, actually. Okay, so that's what I was 
uh, I've said earlier, so Hadoop developers are totally segregated from Hadoop administration stuff. Okay, so they don't really need to know about the cluster setup or let's say uh, uh, management of the cluster or anything related to the cluster itself. They are more concerned about how much of memory is given to their jobs or they are more concerned about the uh, space, permissions, uh, security, all those aspects. Uh, but what I have seen from my experience, guys, okay, that I want to, to share with you guys that any Hadoop developer or let's say any Hadoop administrator also, okay, I mean, both should have the aspects, both should have the understanding of both the areas, okay. I mean, as a Hadoop administrator, I would certainly like to have some understanding of, let's say, the basics of what is Hadoop development all about. When I'm doing, when I'm running big queries, big scripts, or high queries, or let's say, H based commands, okay. And as a developer, if I'm, if let's say I had been a developer, I should always have some understanding of how to administrate the cluster. Okay, not just the cluster setup, but let's say how the high availability is working. I mean, couple of days back, I was, uh, I was uh, in one incident. Okay, so there, uh, people were not aware of what is high availability all about. Okay, what, what do you mean by active mode and standby name? What is the name service all about? Okay. So they were they had to start client configuration and they were not able to do that because of this uh, you know again uh, misunderstanding of what is high availability itself that where they were lagging so we resolved this issue telling them giving them some understanding okay this is what we have guys okay and another major problem is how to harness the whole Hadoop cluster memory itself or let's say resources of the cluster so developers they are not very much about these things okay. Administrator tell them that okay, this is what you should do in your jobs. Okay, I think about the concepts is enough. But let's say if you're doing some practical, so at least on your laptop itself, which we uh, which we explain why we working, that also is more than enough to understand for a developer. I would say. So you can see like how a high end configuration is. Okay, so. How are you going to, you know, harness this 96 gigabytes of RAM, or let's say two into SAS six gigabit per second uh, disk controllers? I mean, yes, it's it's for the masters. I can understand that. But what I'm trying to say, when you have so much of RAM and hard disk being given, okay, Hadoop developer always try to run their jobs. I mean, what their ultimately what their uh, goal is that okay, my job should run fine. But what they do not understand is. Uh, Hadoop is not going to do the magic, right? So, I mean, you are running a web application or let's say some analytics job on Terra data cluster. It, it is also giving you the results. You are running the same job on the Hadoop cluster. So it is the results. But why not taking Hadoop? Why are you actually running it on Hadoop? Okay. So to harness the whole Hadoop cluster components or let's say resources is one of the important goal which Hadoop developer should target at, at every point of time. Okay. So we do provide all of these guidance certainly, and we do uh, 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 do all the practicals on virtual machines. Okay, so generally all the open source softwares are required to build the cluster or to maintain the cluster or to manage the cluster. Okay, so you can do all the practice directly on the uh, laptops itself, on your own laptops. And we do have a, you know questionnaire packs itself uploaded on the website, through which you can always get the guidance of. What are the hardware and software prerequisites for it? But do understand this is not a development uh, course, guys. Okay, so we are we do not basically cover the what is I mean we do not cover the projects here. What I'm trying to say is it's not a you know uh, end to end project where I will say that okay fetch this data put it into the cluster then run some high query and analyze this data uh, then reporting stuff no. Okay, we are not doing any development stuff here. Our idea is to give you all the understanding of what is Hadoop all about, internals of it, touch basing with uh, Hadoop ecosystem components, and then you know merging all of them, integrating them, uh, using their resources, how to provide the quotas, high availability, uh, let's say multiple name nodes in the cluster, uh, monitoring, all of these kind of stuff. Okay, so basically administration stuff. Okay, so utility. Execute few regular utility tasks, developing and running files merger so that the small files and runs our data supplier create would become bigger and fewer. So helping the developers basically to uh, let them know like, what, what you what do you uh, when you are running your jobs. Backup and recovery task, one of the most important aspects when you are uh, in, uh, when you build a cluster, such a huge cluster. 
possible solutions via the distributed copy command where you can copy the uh, data from one Hadoop cluster to another Hadoop cluster, how you can do that. And let you are you're trying to uh, uh, move the data or let's say stream the data directly into the Hadoop distributed file system. So how you can do it via the Flume. So we do provide the guidance uh, uh, related to that as well. And then uh, having multiple developers uh, working on the cluster, okay? And certainly, I mean, all of them wants to harness the power of the cluster. So how will you schedule their jobs? How will you actually configure their jobs into the cluster? How will you tell them, okay, uh, even if multiple users are submitting to the cluster, if multiple users are trying to make the, make the cluster more, uh, if, if they are trying to make their jobs uh, uh, running in priority, so how will you actually uh, stop that? Okay, because everybody cannot run their jobs on higher the memory or the resources to each user in the cluster or let's say on the basis of some parameters okay so analyzing the failed tasks okay fixing the problems for the developers uh, scheduling jobs configuration and this is another you know we we do this stuff on, on a daily basis because uh, when you are having let's say a simple 100 node cluster even a 20 or 30 node cluster people do uh, you know uh, execute like jobs <laughs> multiple times in a day. I mean, it, it's like a never-ending process for the developers, and this this has to be there because on a developer cluster you expect such kind of uh, huge uh, number of jobs itself. So how you can fix the problem? I mean, a couple of days back I was just facing one problem of uh, I mean our developer was facing a of memory issue in their job. So we told them, okay, this is what you are not doing in your uh, in your job. Okay how you can configure this memory part or how you can harness the resources from our cluster itself. Uh, the three or four nodes you are not using right now and you're just using currently these two nodes. So we gave him this on a very simple 10 node cluster, uh, the way to uh, run their job in more uh, performance tuned way. So yes, we do fix the problems for her as well. So moving to the now implementation when we talk about the distributed computing failure is a very normal scenario okay uh, which means yarn should have acceptable amount of availability with running a when you are running a lot of jobs into the cluster it's quite normal that you know your resource manager may go down because of the memory issues or let's say uh, your hardware goes down or, or it can be number of reasons okay so how will you provide the high availability to the cluster because name node is the single point of failure. here. So uh, if let's say for all of you who doesn't understand what is YARN all about, YARN is the processing component of, uh, of Hadoop. So there are two components basically storage and the processing. Okay, storage stores where we store all the data in the distributed manner and YARN yet another resource negotiator where we actually uh, process the data through which the data gets processed in the cluster in the distributed manner. So both of them are currently the single point of failures. I mean by default, okay? But as a Hadoop admin, uh, as a user, you can always make them highly available. That's quite possible, okay? So uh, in Hadoop, you have got a, a secondary name node, okay? So secondary name node is again not a hot standby for the name node and really not recommended to run this because uh, it requires a downtime to build the primary name node from the secondary name node. So how you can provide the high availability with the automatic failover, okay? So that is uh, most important. If processing component is, is YAR, is the storage component. Storage component is called Hadoop Distributed File System, HDFS, okay? YAN is called the resource, uh, processing component. Storage process component is called the uh, Hadoop Distributed System, okay? So this is what I was uh, talking about, a very important and you know very complex architecture of uh, what is, uh, how you can achieve the high availability uh, via Quorum Journal Manager. So what Hadoop recommends is that use my uh, ecosystem component called Zookeeper. What Zookeeper is going to do, Zookeeper is going to uh, manage the states of both the uh, active name node and standby name node. And uh, to provide the failover, we use the Zookeeper failover controller. Zookeeper failover controller actually provides the high availability and Zookeeper service maintains the session state uh, in itself. 
and name node for the name node we have got the shared edits directory so the idea is that both the active and standby name node should have the same set of data so that if the active node goes down standby can become active and this management of active to standby standby to active can be will be done by the zookeeper failover controller and zookeeper failover controller will manage this session data into the zookeeper service okay i totally get that that it's highly uh, complicated to explain in like 5 minutes okay generally we take it like i take it at least 1 to 1 and a half hour to explain itself uh, to give the all the understanding of uh, what is zookeeper for controller all about uh, you can actually manage it or zookeeper service is all about so actually in this webinar what i have done is i have actually uh, uh, created this whole thing one only kumar only one uh, we can uh, uh, sorry rajesh only one we can do at one point of time so one standby and one active so here basically what i have done is i have got one active name node and one standby name node okay and i do have got the uh, one data node basically where the data is going to get stored okay so in a similar simple sense i would like to show you that we have got these three nodes name node 1 name node 2 and one data node basically uh, this name node 1 has is going to be the active name node name node 2 is going to be the standby node and data node 1 is going to be our data node where uh, where we are going to store all the data okay so data gets stored at the name node in the form of blocks okay whole lot of theory is there uh, about the hdfs so i'll not go into very specific or in detail but just giving an idea that hdfs is composed of two components name node and data node name node stores the metadata about the data and data node stores the data about that so currently there is no process running every process is being uh, can be captured by the jps command which is called java processes so if you want to see the java processes you can see why this command is currently you can see there is no process running on these three nodes okay uh, kumar please drop your queries into this questions window okay you are most welcome to ask any kind of questions okay i have requested everyone okay let it be simple stupid whatever it or difficult question Okay. But as I said, I may not be able to answer all the questions, all of you. But I would like to answer everyone's question. Okay, at least I want to address everyone's question. So, do drop your queries. Feel free to ask anything, guys. Uh, this whole webinar, this is webinar is totally for you guys to understand what is Hadoop admin all about, and you know how when we when we are running working as a Hadoop administrator, how you manage the things on a day-to-day -day basis. What all different things you you do on a day-to-day -day basis. So, just showing you one. part of uh uh hide itself okay so for the shared storage i have written some steps here so we use the journal nodes journal node is something here if you see we have got the shared edits directory so basically shared edits directory is the transactional log the change aspect of it where active name node is writing all the changes and these journal nodes are storing all the data and standby name node is reading all that data okay and we're going to use this loop keeper as well so i've got all these components on my single machine okay it's not really difficult to you know explain or let's say uh, put all these machines on the cluster so do not worry about that we need to start this on all the nodes uh, let's say name node 2 and data node 1 and you can easily see it now that one of the process has started all the nodes okay so go to node 1 and then start the name node itself so you need to create some metadata first
So start the name node and uh, the name node on name node two as well. So now in this case we have got two name nodes. Okay, one one is going to be active, another is going to be standby. Okay, as I said earlier. So in this case right now we have got two name nodes, but currently both are independent of each other. The idea is to make them uh, dependent on each other in, on each other by one as active and another as standby. Okay, so now we have to start our zookeeper service. Yes, we do cover all these steps in our classes, guys. Okay, and in very detailed manner, certainly. This is just a bit of demonstration of how we can set up these things. You can see how you know steps we need to run in this case. So it's, it's actually a bit architecture. So now if you see, we have got another component which is called quorum peer main, which is zookeeper cluster. Okay, so zookeeper also has started running along with the main nodes and your data. So you can see right now my data node is not running. So go to the data node one. You can see now data node has also started running. Uh, Anil is saying, do we get any industrial projects to do so? When, when we talk about the administration, Anil, let's say, okay, so what, what kind of industrial projects like you are you're trying to ask okay, in the administration? Stuff? I mean, yes, we do have uh, certainly a lot of uh, uh, problem statements, okay, through which you need to go through and, you know, complete the assignments accordingly, okay? How will you reach this stage, how will you reach to that stage, okay? But what I'm trying to say is, uh, giving the understanding is one of the important aspects, okay? So yes, we do cover uh, those problem statements as well in our course. And if you see here now, both of the Hadoop name nodes are into the, one of, one of them is active right now, and another one is standby. And you can see the same thing via the uh, web interface as well. If you go to the web interface, one of the name node is currently active. And another name node is currently in standby mode. So even if one of the name node goes down, okay, your cluster will not go anywhere. You'll still be able to run the jobs. Okay, and similar thing you can you know achieve for the resource manager as well. So if you see now, I am not running any resource manager or node manager here, which is actually the processing part, as I told you earlier. So resource manager uh, is the part of Yarn, which is basically the master node. Okay, and node manager is the slave part of your uh, Yarn only. So master is resource manager, slave is node manager. Okay, so how you do that? You start one history server which is going to keep all the history for your jobs. And then you start the resource manager. So once you started the resource manager, again, it's going to store all the data into the zookeeper. So just to showcase guys, if you go to the zookeeper uh, server, you'll see it has stored some resource manager data and yarn data. So how this data is integrated, how these things come, we cover all these aspects you can see it has got now HA cluster and active standby elector log so right now the resource manager is there and 
parking node to if I go to the name node to and start the history server and the resource manager you'll, you'll see the job history server as well and go to the data node one and start the node manager here as well. so now if you see resource manager is also highly available you can see one of one of them the resource manager is active another is standby so you can see the same thing from the web interface 9 zip port number i mentioned and if i am even i am going to the high uh, Standby resource manager, it is going to strip this is standby resource manager redirecting to the current active resource manager. So it's not going to uh, check my standby. And you can see it has it has gone to the active store resource manager. And you can even verify it. I mean, if you run any job here, let, if I access new Hadoop distributed file system, simply by running commands. I know these things sound. Uh, I mean, I, I I'm not expecting anyone to you know understand a lot of things here. Just giving you an idea. Uh, when you're building a cluster. Okay, how all different things you need to take care of. Really, these are the steps I have just written. So let's say uh, I have got uh, I've got into another node. So here is my uh, name node two. Okay. Currently, I'm running on the name node one because it's here is my resource manager and the active active mode. So if I normally run the uh, map reduce job here, which is normally a world count job, uh, basically a hello world of in the world, hello world of Hadoop. Okay. So if I'm running a yarn job. And uh, suddenly, I kill this, you know, process of resource manager, the active resource manager, or the master resource manager. Okay, this also even going to complete my job because my resource manager is in high available state, uh, highly available state. Okay, so what I'm trying to showcase here is that uh, uh, how you can actually have the both ability in the main node and the uh, manager. Okay, so here it is taken the job here, so you can monitor this job from the resource manager's web interface. Okay, and let's say during the job run, if I suddenly kill this resource manager. Okay, you can see it has given some exception. What I'm what I'm expecting here is that it should it should uh, complete this job, so I should get my output. Any of the case, so let's switch to the 52, and here you can see the on the resource manager two basically my job is running. So basically, it has taken all the state of my job from the uh, from the resource manager two. So basically, Zookeeper actually, Zookeeper is storing all the state information. So that's what the that's what the idea is, guys. Okay, uh, to complete the job, to manage the HA part here. As I said earlier, it's going to take some time uh, because it, it's going to require some resources first and then start the job. So Uh, here I'm going to use, I'm using the uh, Cloudera, sorry, I'm using the Apache Hadoop, okay, which is the, uh, just the metal Hadoop, I mean, no changes, 
coming directly from the developers. Okay, uh, developers version, I'll say. Okay, it has certainly a lot of bugs. Okay, but 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 try to explore here is how these things work internally. Okay, because when you are working with Horton works or Cloudera's distribution, okay, you are going to use the automation stuff a lot. Okay, where you actually leave behind those things. Uh, I mean the internals of of these Hadoop part. When we try to explore in our course. We actually take the bare metal Apache Hadoop. Okay, put all the configurations, configure them, and everything, and then uh, take it to the next level. So then we go into the cloud as distribution of Hadoop and explore more about that. That's how we do in the classes. So this is uh, the second part of this high availability, which is done via the network file system NFS server. You can achieve the automatic failover via the NFS server as well, guys. Okay, uh, but we'll keep it to the uh, next uh, top uh, uh, next webinar. Uh, you can see at the back end what it says is over to the source manager to uh, mapper 0%, reducer 0%, 0, 0%, 0. It has started a job there and it's certainly going to complete this job in, in time. <clears throat> so that was our basically a small hands on on achieving the HDFS and YARN high availability. Okay, so let's go into the details of something about updates and upgrades. Okay, so upgrading in the farm from time to time is really most of the, one of the again, important aspect of the uh, Hadoop administrator. Uh, because uh, in these days, a lot of different versions of Hadoop are coming. I mean, when we say different versions, so version one to version two is something which people are trying to move. And in the version two itself, there are a lot of minor changes, minor versions, which, which people are actually moving to get the more benefits from the different features of Hadoop itself. Uh, but here, what we try to do is we try to upgrade our system from version one to version two. Uh, yes, we do. We can actually do so. We can use uh, HDFS federation uh, along with high availability. That is totally uh, fine. But again, not recommended because uh, single Hadoop highly available cluster okay can accommodate easily 4,000 data nodes. Okay, uh, federation is required. Or federation is actually uh, recommended for the clusters having. Uh, more than let's say 10,000 nodes or something. I mean, you, when you have a like very huge cluster, talking about you know Facebook or Google type of clusters. So this is what we do, guys. When you do the upgrades in the cluster, okay. Uh, so so what I've done is I have created a six-node uh, upgrade for you guys. Okay, just to showcase. I'm going to share this, share this, and start the upgrade machines. Uh, the idea is to basically showcase how you can upgrade your Hadoop distributed file system. Okay, so let's just check out the upgradation in cluster. So very quickly, uh, let me get off uh, all these machines, and then probably we we'll, we can understand what is Hadoop upgrade all about. So, in the meantime, when we these machines are getting started, we can check out the demonstration later on. So, uh, adding or decommissioning the nodes in the cluster, okay, removing the faulty data nodes. Again, uh, uh, we can follow some of these steps to complete the in decommissioning process. So, we actually actually show this this thing also in the class practically when you know, how to add a new node in the running cluster without bringing your nodes down. So your service will not get affected, and how you can extension also the data nodes from the cluster. So various steps are being written for that as well in this uh, thing. And then in the end, that uh, how will you monitor the cluster itself? So in this in this uh, webinar, we have not discussed more about the uh, monitoring part. Like uh, I do have a Ganglia cluster, okay, but it is not integrated with Hadoop. So. Uh, so so through the different different components like Nagios or Ganglia or Cloud Data Manager, how you can check the uh, monitor, how you can monitor your Hadoop, like the services or the memory or CPU or processes, uh, or let's say there are a lot of Hadoop metrics which are being provided by the uh, Hadoop to JMX framework, Java management extension. So uh, we do cover up basics about that as well, like how you integrate in your Hadoop cluster. So there are various monitoring tools. Uh, today, Cloudera has got Cloudera Manager. 
which they use for monitoring the cluster. Hortonworks have got uh, Apache Ambari for monitoring their clusters, and Ganglia and Agios are like common, and I mean they're like open source tools, so you can always use them and integrate them in your cluster as well. Next big challenge is to provide the security to the cluster. So security is the another important component of uh, Hadoop cluster, where you need to manage your developers, you need to secure their data uh, with encryption, or let's say uh, by giving the permissions on the various Hadoop entries and the databases. So how you will uh, manage this privacy and integrity? How will you provide security to the jobs or the uh, to the users so that uh, you know how how people actually uh, can run their jobs or how they can actually execute their jobs or you know secure their jobs in the cluster? How you can secure their data? So uh, this is again a task of a task of a new administrator. Okay. And this uh, course. So how you can integrate the Kerberos for the dedication tokens, job tokens, block access tokens, and how you can actually use the SAS also, also in your cluster. Well, we do not cover it, really a lot of practicals in this part, but yes, uh, basic of what is Kerberos all about and how you can integrate it with the cluster. What are the different properties you, you can actually use? Uh, we do cover all those aspects as well in Clover course. So Kerberos has like Three important things. One is uh, key distribution center, authentication server, ticket granting server, and got uh, the clients which are going to authenticate with the cluster. So how you can actually integrate that as well and provide the security. We, we do cover our course uh, in that point. And then uh, <clears throat> some of the other things like checking the resources usage and users permissions like quotas or you know how you can actually restrict your users to uh, how you can actually use it just to put uh, not put uh, data from a certain specific limit beyond a certain specific limit like one terabyte of data can be given for one user or let's say 100 files I mean you're, you're trying to allow only 100 number of files are like 100 only to put into a certain specific directory so how you can actually provide the space limits or the file limits on that directory uh, by putting the quotas and user accounts and when let's say your data gets deleted uh, evidently in every by default, so how you will be able to recover data by configuring the trash server or recycle bins. So I do cover all the aspects in our course uh, in my, my classes, configuring a trash server. And last but not the least, troubleshooting errors for the developers. So how will you troubleshoot the errors for the developers case? Uh, Mostly, like I have seen uh, the the task related to the uh, <clears throat> the error related to the memory issues, okay, and the security issues. So how will you troubleshoot those? And some of like these are these are again the quite common and easy to understand. Like if your name node is not in up, or let's say you are not able to uh, your data is not get replicated properly, or uh, you are not able to get the block locations. Uh, those some kind of exceptions you get on a daily basis. So how will you manage those things as well in your in your cluster? And this is the advanced part, like when when you are actually when you have understand everything now about the Hadoop and this administration part from the manual. So how will you automate the because uh, cluster building is like one or once or twice, but after that it is about you know uh, the management only of the cluster. So how will you use the uh, configuration management tools like Puppet or Chef? To manage your cluster with the, with some automations, so we do uh, we do cover we do not cover I mean in detail but yes basics about that as well also is being covered in the course. So uh, in the end let's let's go to the uh, part of uh, upgrades. Okay, actually upgrade a six node Hadoop cluster from. Uh, Hadoop version 1 to Hadoop version 2, guys. So, in this also, basically, you can see uh, I have got six node cluster where uh, currently my version of Hadoop is pointing to version 1.2.1. Actually, people understand that upgrading a Hadoop cluster is putting the newer version of Hadoop, which is actually not right. Uh, upgrading the cluster means to 
uh, upgrade the version of HDFS and uh, processing component. So when you are upgrading from version 1 to version 2, it's more about you know uh, upgrading the uh, Hadoop distributed file system version, which is currently, I mean, if I would show you here, uh, let me stop it. So currently if you see the version 1 is minus 41 which is a very older version of HDFS. How you can uh, upgrade it to let's say newer version of uh, uh, HDFS. Okay. So it's uh, simple to do. I mean in this case because I have configured a lot of stuff here. So you start the uh, Uh, no, you don't need to reboot the cluster shikan, not at all. Okay, so in this case, uh, let me. So let's say here uh, you have got the distributed file system. So you start your DFS. Which basically starts your name node data can be name node, and then you can see your Hadoop is up and running. But this is like version one running. What I want to do is I want to upgrade this cluster from version one to version two. So sell some data for just some testing purpose. You can see I've got some data inside the input directory. Now what I want to do is I want to upgrade this cluster. So I'll do what I'll do is I'll stop cluster itself. Really, I need to have some downtime for this. And what I will do after that? <clears throat> so the McCafe is not going to allow these nodes to run at all, <laughs> unless I will not allow. So uh, I'm going to stop. I will stop all these uh, processes right now. And uh, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to first point it to the uh, newer version of Hadoop. And after that, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to update their metadata. Okay, which will upgrade my whole Hadoop cluster. So I'm going to start the uh, Hadoop B1 of name node, which basically is going. What is going to do is, it's going to uh, give me the newer version of HDFS. Like you can see here, the layout version has been changed from minus 41 to minus 47. Now this is basically now pointing towards the Hadoop version 2. In the steps, it seems very easy. We quickly run those commands, but actually it's a bit typical process. Again, you need to setting some uh, file changes and all to, to complete to achieve this upgrade. Okay, and then you can start or again uh, hold file system and you will see your data will not get lost because we have just upgraded the HDFS. You can see right now uh, the data is there safe after upgrade as well. So this is what uh, we have, guys. If you have any questions from your side, you are feel free to ask anything. Okay. Uh, certainly, after this survey, I mean, after this webinar, you have a short survey as well. Your feedback is very important for us. It will be a compliment, suggestion, or a complaint. It helps us to make your experience better. Spare a few minutes, but it will be one or two minutes to take the survey after this webinar, and we will be glad to uh, take all the suggestions and. To try to improve our services. Okay, so if you have any questions, guys, please feel free to ask. We certainly have one or two minutes left. Okay, this is a whole about the a day, uh, the life of a Hadoop administrator. How you, what all the different activities you complete on a day-to-day -day basis, you do on a day-to-day -day basis, and this is what today. So that's from my side. If you have any queries, anything you want to ask, please. Put your queries into the comments window, questions window.
So we need to know the Java to become Hadoop administrator. No, uh, Simon, as I have discussed earlier, no Java expertise is required, and no, not even the basics, I'll say, uh, to become a Hadoop administrator. 15 years of experience working as middle management. What do you suggest for me as I written earlier? I want to learn you no know, big data ecosystem. Yes, I know the basics of Unix. So Rajesh, you need to start with you need to somewhere, right? So if you are afraid that you need to learn a lot of tools here, do not get afraid because you know uh, how can I do the practice if I'm not in big data projects, especially for Hadoop administration? Certainly, Rajesh, I mean I am not saying I'm not denying okay, you will understand everything from this course, but this is the start, I will say. Okay, take this start, learn the basics, learn the uh, advanced, learn the expert expert part of the uh, of Hadoop. Okay, it's like a basics core Java and the advanced Java. So we do cover core Hadoop and the advanced Hadoop, and then you know if you are able to understand these concepts and all. Okay, once you understand how you can do the hands on and everything, you can always show this showcase this to your seniors or let's say to your peers and then. You can get into the big project, big data part. I mean, certainly you will get that confidence that okay, you are able to understand. Okay, so <laughs> okay, so Kumar, do you have any specific Kumar query via the unmuting purpose? I mean, you can always reach out to our sales team. As I said, we do have like 20 odd guys on our call. Uh, unmuting each and every one is really a bit uh, so. Why don't you write your queries into the questions window? It would really help me to explain in more detail. Is this webinar going to be available for later review? Yes, absolutely, Vijay. You can. Uh, uh, we are going to put this recording in your uh, IDs. You can always review them. Do you have any course material workbook from where the course participants practice? Yes, we do have all the course materials, and we have provided all these course material learning management system. So our learning management system is very uh, detailed. We do provide all the supports itself for how you can access this LMS, how you can access your guides. Everything is there. Is data mining and analytics all involved in Hadoop administration part? No, Samuel, not at all. Uh, in Hadoop administration, you don't do any data mining or let's say analytics. Okay, uh, Rajesh, uh, sorry, Kumar, you really want to? You really want me to unmute you? Uh, if you have any query. Well, I'm totally fine, honestly. It's not like that. I am, I am restricted. I am limited to this point. If you have any queries, I can unmute you. Okay, so I think uh, that's all, guys. Uh, how many sessions will you take to teach Hadoop administration? We do have like eight sessions of this course. And each session uh, is composed of like three hours. If you are taking a weekend classes, if you are doing a, week, a weekday course, then it, each session, we are having 12 classes, and each class is of two duration. Can you share the agenda topic you cover in the sessions? Are all these classes type? No, we use the webinar. We use the go to webinar to conduct all the classes. And to send that, guys, uh, just reach out to our website, which is called edureka.co, and just go to the registration course. You can see an online classes assignment of 30 hours. I mean, you you will get all the things. Okay, so I was not aware of this. You can see a freedom sale. Flat 15% off, last few seats remaining, enroll now. Okay, so that, that's also is there. But you can see the about course, about the course as well, and about, about the various topics which we cover in our course. Kit about the HDFS ACLs. Uh, yes, uh, we have, I mean, uh, we do cover that in our classes. So I hope to see you in this session. And we'll get more about idea about what is ACL all about. Need to learn any databases for Hadoop? No, we can't. No databases required for learning Hadoop at all. These all classes are covered via the go to webinar base. You don't really need to uh, use uh, any Skype or anything.
What about MongoDB? Uh, no, we can We don't cover MongoDB. We do have a separate course for MongoDB. If you want to learn about MongoDB, you can please join that. Okay, so I wanted to learn big data and Hadoop. Then it was suggested to me to do talent for big data. I joined and completed the course. Uh, well, Rajesh, I'm really not aware of uh, how did you get that guidance. Big data administration does not does not require any knowledge of talent. Okay, but certainly not a waste of when you have learned something. You can practice more about it, and I can uh, promise everyone. I can uh, bet everyone that okay, this course is really interesting. Okay. It's not like uh, what I teach or whatever you know, other instructors teach. It's about uh, you know, it's not about only the sales aspect. What I'm trying to say, uh, it's about like what I have seen uh, because administration is more interesting and exciting. The uh, one you know, just uh, looking at the screen and you know, <laughs> doing the development or the building. It's more about you know, uh, running some practical aspects of this this uh, part. I am I am going to be there. That's right. Yes. Uh, now I want to join Big Data ecosystem. So I want to know how Hadoop Administrator will help me. Uh, so this course is more dedicated, Rajesh, towards the Hadoop administration. Okay, not the Hadoop ecosystem administration. Okay. As earlier, uh, like you can see in the seventh uh, class, you can setting up Apache Uzi workflow scheduler for Hadoop jobs, Hedge catalog Hive administration, deploy Hedge base with other Hadoop ecosystem components. Using HBase simply to load data writing to and reading from HBase. So basics of these components, okay, again, not in this detail, but basics of these components are being covered in our course. Because lot many administration can be covered. I mean, if you want to do, you can do a lot of things from the administration perspective. Okay, so that's great, guys. So if you have questions now, uh, apart from this, please do drop an email to our sales team or you can reach out to our sales team and feel free to ask anything about this, okay? Thank you so much for joining in. Have a good day, good night, cheers, bye.